Hey, thanks for joining. Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick, simple Kydex holster for inside the waistband. Real simple holster. This one in particular is going to be for a Smith & Wesson Shield 9mm. And I'm going to go over the process of this and I will put a link right up here somewhere to my main video that is quite a bit longer that goes over all the tools and all the uh, equipment needed and all that stuff. And I'll put some links in the description below also for the products used. So let's get to it and we'll start making this. Alright, so we're going to be using a real gun to mold this, so the very first thing we want to do is make sure the gun is clear, 100% clear. And then uh, I went ahead and cut the piece of Kydex. I cut this one to uh, basically about 6.5 by 8.5 to start with. And I went ahead and marked center on this, the lengthwise, the 8.5 way, marked it at four and a quarter center. So the gun will set basically right there. And now... I take some of these blocks, I just go to like Hobby Lobby or craft store and I bought a bag of these little miscellaneous sized chips of wood, that's the easiest thing I found to mask with. I take two of these small ones that fit in this ejection port, I have to double them up. And go ahead and take some blue masking tape and tape them on. And you can use popsicle sticks, cut down, whatever you need. And I take a little piece of dowel rod and I'll tape it right here to make a sight channel. I don't know if you can see that. Go ahead and get it taped on there. And anywhere you've got that's going to cause extra retention or hang up, you want to go ahead and block it out like this. It has the takedown and the uh, slide lock. So we'll go ahead and cover those with a little small popsicle stick. I'll go ahead and tape them on there. That'll just keep it from having any extra retention there. Because we'll try to get our retention right here on the front of the trigger guard. So we don't want it to bind up and catch anywhere like that. I go ahead and cover the trigger guard with a little bit of tape just to keep it not where it doesn't push too tight down in there. Should do that. Now, depending on what hand you're using, you block out where you mount this block out so your screws don't rub your gun and it has room for them. So I just take a little chunk of wood that I cut down and kind of sand it smooth. And this will be right handed so we're going to put it on this side of the gun here. And you decide how far up you want it on the gun. This is where it depends on uh, how far you want it outside of your waistband basically because this is your belt line. So we're going to put this one down a little farther than that one was. And I usually put it at just a little bit of a cant. But you can put this straight, you can decide whatever can't you want as you're doing this. Go ahead and mount it right there. Just a little, probably the one edge of it about even with the trigger guard. The lower edge. I kind of just set it on here and toy with it to see where I kind of want it to set. That should work perfect. All right, and that's all there is to masking it. I mean, that's as masked as you really need it for this. Go ahead and put this in the oven. And like I said in my other video, make sure you start at the very lowest temperature and put your textured side up so it doesn't get any lines in it from the oven rack. But uh, start at your very lowest temperature on your toaster oven and slowly work your way up till you get to the temperature you need it at, which is approximately around 300 degrees, makes it really pliable. So Alright, so starting with my oven on about its lowest heat setting. Throw this in there. 
And then once it warms up to that, I'll just gradually increase it ever so slightly until I use my laser thermometer and actually open a door and shoot this and shoot it all around. Sometimes you have to spin it around depending on the size of it to get it all equal temperature. But normally I don't have any issues with that. But once you get it up to about 280 to 300, then you can pull it out and throw it on your foam. Now one thing I do do is I take my heat gun and I go ahead and kind of warm my foam a little just so it's not cold. And I go ahead and warm the gun just a little. Don't get it, you know, don't hold it one spot and get it hot. Just get it warm. And I usually take my top piece of foam and just throw it on top of the toaster oven. And it kind of gets warm just from that so you don't have to heat it. Once you pull your Kydex out of the oven, you need to be prepared to move kind of quickly because you don't want it to get too cool because you'll lose some of your definition if it gets cool. So you want to be ready to go and have everything ready whenever it's ready. So you just pull it out, throw it on, set your gun on and fold it over. Okay, so our Kydex, we'll get it to temperature. Put it on here backwards of that and get it where we want it set. Try to stay out of the way of the camera. Go ahead and fold this around. Press it down on there. Try to keep it pretty even. You get your foam on. Go ahead and clamp it down. Now we'll just let it sit there for five, ten minutes, let it cool off. Once it's cool, I'll be back. Okay, it should be cool enough, I can go ahead and open the press. See, there we got it. Just like we want it there. We'll pull the gun out of it. Show you kind of what we got. And as soon as this gets the rest of the way cool, I'll go ahead and get it marked out for how we want to cut the holster and the shape we want. And I'm going to switch the camera around and we'll do that. So I can go ahead and unmask the gun now. Right. Now we got to decide how we want it to look. I'm going to go ahead and leave the muzzle open, so come across here. And I just kind of eyeball this and just draw a line, and if I don't like it, I wipe it off and draw another. Just kind of trial and error, at least it has been for me, on how to get it how I want it. I want to go ahead and come right across the back of the trigger guard, because you want plenty of room for your fingers to get a good grip on the gun. And we'll come up across to where we put our block for our mounting hole. And these are just white fabric pencils. You can get them at Walmart or this is a dressmaker's marking pencil. What it says. That's what I use for it. You can get these at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or wherever. I think I want it to come out just a little farther that way so I've got plenty of room for the rivet there. Alright, I'm going to go over to the scroll saw and go ahead and get this cut for the first time to a basic shape and then we'll see what it looks like and go from there. Be right back. Alright, I've got the basic shape of the cut. Let's see how it's going to look. Yeah. I need to take a little more off right here, which I didn't cut my line right there. Then I'm going to take a little more of what my line was. A little more off right there. And we'll just kind of smooth this side. 
All right, I'm gonna go trim this up a little more, then I'll take the sander and go ahead and smooth it off. Then I use the buffing wheel on a bench grinder to go ahead and smooth it up, and then we'll do the rest by hand. But let me go get this trim to fit. Right in here is where you gotta worry about making sure you have enough clearance, which I have fat fingers, so this is probably enough for most people. But I'm gonna go ahead and take just a little bit more out right in there. Give me just a little more clearance so you can get a good grip on it. Okay, so I went ahead and buffed it. As you can see there's still some of the buffing wheel left on it, but uh, got what I can with that. Now I'm gonna use a piece of this 500 grit sandpaper and just smooth everything up. There's no rough edges. I just use one of these red scuff pads to just final finish the edges just to make sure they're good and smooth. I may overdo this some, but I still do it anyways. Alright, so now I got it all blown out. Now, I just need to put a rivet in it, hold it together, we're going to set the rivet right in this empty space right in here. I usually use my drill press for this, but this is just one, so I'm just going to drill it with this. Set in there. So now let's try the gun in it and see how it feels. All right. And we'll take, once I'm done with everything, I'll take the uh, heat gun and go ahead and adjust the retention on it right here so we can get it to the retention we want. So now I'm going to drill for the uh, belt clip. Okay. So now we're going to drill this. The easiest way is just set this on here how you want it and just mark the holes. that in there just drill too. Took a little bee burn. These snug down good and tight. Just need to adjust the retention right here and it doesn't need much. But I'll go ahead and show you how I do that. Just heat it right where you want the retention adjusted. Go in that trigger guard. To get it warm, I just push my 
Sometimes it's easier to do it with the gun in it. Doesn't take a whole lot of heat, just enough to get the flex in. I like that right there, so I'm just going to leave that one alone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. And I've got some more videos coming up in the future on this. I've just been playing with some leather, doing a hybrid holster. A hybrid inside the waistband holster. I've actually made a couple now. As soon as I get that fine-tuned on how I'm doing it, then I'm going to make a video on how to do that. It's a pretty simple process. It makes a real nice, a lot more comfortable holster to carry every day inside the waistband. So look for that in the next few weeks. And thanks for watching. And make sure you subscribe so you see more.